When life's got you down and you need a little pick-me-up, curling up with a comfy feel-good anime can make a world of difference. While some believe that feel-good anime exclusively refers to a subgenre known as yashike, or healing anime, I don't personally think that a show needs to be strictly healing in order for it to elicit the same effect. Any anime that is capable of putting a smile on someone's face and improving their mood counts in my book, so this list will consist of a variety of different slice of life, comedy, romance and healing anime that have helped me whenever I was feeling down and needed something to cheer me up. As always, I'm going to try to recommend anime that don't get brought up too often, so you're not going to see frequently recommended titles like Nan Biori, Barakamon, Laid Back Camp, Natsumi's Book of Friends, Flying Witch, or Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, for example. I'm probably forgetting some others, but the point is that if it's a well-known or popular feel-good anime, then it likely won't be featured here. I'm also not going to be repeating anime that I've already recommended in other videos, so if you want even more feel-good anime to watch, I've gone ahead and created a playlist, linked in the description below, that features every feel-good anime I've ever talked about on this channel. Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts is a story of a girl who is the 99th human sacrifice for the King of Beasts, to be devoured on the Night of Revelation. Although frail looking, she neither fears death nor the king, and she has no family or home to return to should she escape. Intrigued by the audacious girl, the king lets her roam around the palace, and little by little, the two begin to warm up to each other. I'm genuinely surprised that so many people passed upon this anime, given how well received its source material is, and the fact that this is a complete anime adaptation. After the first episode, I already knew that this was going to be an anime I'd enjoy, and it didn't disappoint. It has great world building, a diverse cast of likeable characters, and a wholesome romance between its two main leads that is nothing short of adorable. If, like many, you skipped this anime, I'd implore you to reconsider, as you're missing out on a genuinely delightful show that doesn't deserve to be forgotten. Campfire Cooking in Another World tells the story of a salaryman who is accidentally summoned to another world with a unique non-combat skill called Online Supermarket, which is deemed useless. In reality, it proves to be anything but, as it allows him to cheaply purchase food products and utensils from Japan. With this ability, he travels the world, earning his keep as an adventurer and merchant, all while enjoying delectable meals. I'm a sucker for food-centric anime, what with Restaurant Twin of the World being one of my all-time favourites, as it's really hard to mess them up, and they always seem to have really high production values when it comes to the food itself, to the point where you wish you could just reach into the screen and grab it. If you've seen other similar shows, then you'll already know what to expect here. It's just characters preparing and eating good food, and I have no complaints. For an alternative recommendation, besides the aforementioned Restaurant to Another World, I'd highly suggest watching Isekai Isekaya, which is another comfy food-centric anime that is very much overlooked by the community. Sureza Rare Children is a series of short stories revolving around different students and their romantic relationships. From being unable to confess, to not knowing what true love really is, various obstacles can arise when learning about romantic attraction for the first time. This is just adorable fluff, as it revolves around different sets of characters navigating their newly found romantic relationships, and the numerous mishaps that can occur along the way. There's a good variety of different situations and character archetypes, so there's bound to be at least one couple that you find yourself rooting for. The only real downside to this anime is that there aren't more episodes to watch, but what is available is absolutely worth it. Keep Your Hands Off Azukin tells the story of a high school girl who loves anime, but hasn't yet taken the first step in actually making one. Alongside a young model who really wants to be an animator, and a money-making opportunist who takes on the role of producer, the trio form an animation club with the goal of creating an anime that will amaze the world. This has a lot of similarities to Shiro Baka, at least on the surface. Both revolve around the creation of anime, but unlike Shiro Baka, that is more focused on the anime industry itself, this anime is more interested in exploring the creativity and passion that goes into creating a work of art. The presentation is especially fantastic, as oftentimes the style of the animation will change to reflect what the characters are imagining. It's an engaging and uplifting anime that is essentially a love letter to animation, and one that I can wholeheartedly recommend. My Senpai is Annoying tells the story of a saleswoman who has managed to hold a respectable job at a trading company thanks to the guidance of her senior co-worker. However, her short stature often results in said co-worker treating her like a child, leaving her persistently irritated. To all of her friends though, it's clear that she secretly harbours feelings for him that she struggles to come to terms with. 
This is a very sweet and fluffy rom-com that features a straightforward plot, but it works quite well, and it achieves what it sets out to. It's not going to blow your mind, but it's fun and easily digestible, making it a no-brainer for this list. For an alternative recommendation, I suggest watching Wotokui Love is Hard for Otaku, which is another office rom-com, and is also equally fluffy and wholesome. Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle is a story of a princess who's kidnapped and imprisoned in the Demon Lord's castle and is rather indifferent to her situation. Instead, she worries about one thing and one thing only, sleep. Thus, she must make do of whatever she can find in the castle. With so many potential materials at her disposal, nothing will stop her from sleeping. This anime was far better than it had any right to be, given its premise. It's the kind of plot where you'd think it would grow stale after a while, but the author always manages to come up with new and interesting ideas to keep it feeling fresh. It's also got a really fun cast of characters, and it's adorably cute to boot, so it's an easy anime to recommend. Satan Academy, Join the Pack, revolves around a guy named Jin, who is one of few humans attending Satan Academy, a place filled with a plethora of interesting and diverse animal species. The only problem is he severely hates animals from the bottom of his heart. After stumbling upon a rowdy and assertive wolf girl, a chaotic and hilarious relationship between the two is forged, ensuring that his school life will never be the same again. On the surface, this appears as a formulaic high school comedy, but the various different species and their unique traits created some interesting opportunities for storytelling and humour that I wasn't expecting. It's not an anime I'm likely to go out of my way to rewatch, but I ended up enjoying it far more than I thought I would. For an alternative recommendation, I suggest watching Interviews with Monster Girls, which does a lot of similar things, but just does them a lot better. Play It Cool Guys tells the story of a group of guys who, despite their distinct personalities, all have one thing in common. They're all naturally clumsy and go out of their way to disguise their embarrassment. No matter what happens in their daily lives, they try their best not to lose their cool. This is a simple but wholesome show about guys making silly mistakes as they go about their daily lives, which slowly weave into one another over time, bringing these like-minded people together. It never feels as though it's outstayed its welcome, with it always managing to put a huge grin on my face by the end of each episode. For an alternative recommendation, I suggest checking out You and Me, which is another anime that revolves around a group of young men going about their daily lives, and the various hijinks that ensue. Skip and Loafer is the story of a girl who leaves her countryside town to attend a prestigious high school in the hustle and bustle of Tokyo. With a clear life plan already mapped out, she has absolute confidence that there will be zero mishaps, only to find herself lost and late on the first day of school. Fortunately, she encounters a fellow student in a similar predicament, who offers to go with her. Despite their opposing personalities, the two forge a fruitful relationship, along with their fellow classmates, ensuring that whatever else happens, she certainly won't be alone. This is one of my favourite anime to wear this year, as not only is it really sweet, it also features a grounded story, which makes it feel more endearing. I love the general vibe this anime gives off. It's a refreshing and heartwarming high school slice of life romance, that doesn't fall into the same pitfalls that other similar shows do, and is one that I could recommend to just about anyone. The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting tells the story of a man who isn't afraid to resort to violence, if deemed necessary. After almost jeopardising a peace treaty, his boss tasks him with taking care of his precious seven-year-old daughter so that he understands what it truly means to be responsible for another life. While the two initially don't see eye to eye, as time goes on they come to understand one another, despite their differences. This is a kind of melding of Hina Matsuri and Buddy Daddies, combining wholesome comedic moments with some more serious drama, what with the organised crime and revolving around the Yakuza. It remains largely light-hearted however, and the characters, their chemistry with each other, and their backstories made this a worthwhile watch in my mind. For an alternative recommendation, with a similar theme but a lot more wholesome, then School Babysitters is definitely one you should pick up. Tanari no Sekikun, the master of killing time, is a story of a girl called Rumi, who wants nothing more than to be able to focus during class, but is constantly distracted by her neighbouring classmate Sekikun, who obsesses over intricate setups created using an assortment of items from elaborate domino courses to treacherous war games played out with shogi pieces. What I loved about this anime was the sheer variety of things Sekikun gets up to when the teacher isn't looking. There are some really creative activities that you don't anticipate, and as such, Rumi ends up acting like a self-insert for the audience, 
as we become just as fascinated by what sorts of things he's up to. It's a simple but clever idea, and an easy recommendation for sure. Tomo-chan as a girl revolves around two childhood friends, Tomo and June, who are inseparable, like two brothers. Except that the tomboyish Tomo is really a girl and is in love with June. Her rough mannerisms and lack of hesitance to throw a punch results in her love confession being misinterpreted as just a sign of friendship. Realising her affection will continue to go unnoticed unless she does something about it, she must find a way to knock some sense into June and open his eyes to what is right in front of him. This is a really sweet rom-com. Tomo and June's relationship is so endearing that you can't help but root for them, which makes this ending all the more satisfying. The fact that this is also a complete adaptation also elevates this show above many others, as you aren't left wondering if they'll actually get together or how it all concludes. It's a seriously great time. And there you have it. Hopefully you found a new Feel Good anime to watch, and like I said at the start of this video, I've created a playlist of more Feel Good anime that you can check out in the description below if you're in need of more wholesome goodness. And if you want even more anime recommendations, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I also have a second channel where I create in-depth video game documentaries on various PC and PlayStation franchises, so if you're a gamer who grew up in the 90s, like I did, and you want to learn about the behind the scenes of some of your favourite games, then go and check out my second channel by clicking the card in the corner, or by clicking the link in the description below.